Hi guys, and welcome to the, I can't, I can't know. That's what my four-year-old says. If she doesn't know something, she says, I can't know. Um, it's somewhere in the eighties. Welcome back to the Yarn Junkie podcast. My name is Amber. I'm your host. I'm coming you to you from Texas with my husband, our three daughters and many pets. I went ahead and scooped up Mushu since he was in the room with me so I could show him off. We got him last Summer, he's a Bengal, which if you don't know what that means, he looks like a little leopard. Um, they have brown and gold ones too, but we wanted this really pretty gray one. He's a little over a year old now, and the puppy is his best friend. So they play <laughs> all the time. But she, he was here, and so I wanted to grab him so he could say hello. And he likes to be held on his terms. He doesn't really like to be grabbed up and produced in front of the camera, so we'll let him run off. And Sookie's here with me always, my French bulldog that I got a couple months ago. <laughs> this is not an animal podcast. This is a knitting fiber creation podcast. So there went the cat and the dog out of the room. Good. I don't really have show notes. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through all of the things I've been working on. I didn't record a podcast last week. It was Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all of those that celebrate. I hope you had some delicious food with your family. We went and had Thanksgiving with Tim's grim grandfather and his mom and sister. And then we had our own little Thanksgiving here on Thursday with just our little family of five, which was really nice. And then my birthday was this past Tuesday. Today's Thursday, December second. So happy birthday to me. And I got a ton. I'll swipe all of that up there was from my birthday. And we'll get to that in a minute. I'm either going to do it on this episode or just do a birthday haul because it's so much to get through. Like I went crazy at the yarn store. But all of the things I've been working on. So I did start my knit again just because I didn't like how loose it was. So the last time I showed you guys this, I think I was like down here somewhere, just a few rows and it was way too loose. So I began again and I'm much happier with this. And I really haven't touched this in a week, but I did do this the, after the last podcast. So I wanted to show you guys and I'm loving, loving this mint. And I really like on the back how it's checkered. It's just such a fun knit, but small circumference knitting right quick is not really my bag. And so it was just a little bit of a, a distraction project more than anything. I really do need mitts. I really hope to finish them, but I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to get them done. This isn't like a, oh, I need this done next week. I could probably have it done in a few days, but that was that project that I worked on. I also worked on... And I showed my min bag last time, but isn't it cute? It's so tiny. And this is a bag from Stitchin' Stitchin' You bags. You is spelled like the sheep, of course, because we're all knitters. And then in this bag that is from Tanny Casey, I started or I was working on Ruby's popcorn woodland popcorn pullover is the pattern. And so you see, I got a sleeve knit. I was done with the body last time. I probably could have knit this other sleeve and had this finished, but you know, y'all know me. I work on way too many projects and have ADHD. So I have to jump around from things to not get bored, but this we're going, um, on a car ride this weekend. We'll have about two hours in the car. That's when I worked on this. The last time is we, we went to town and I had some hours in the car and so I'll be able to bang this out this weekend. It will be finished and she's really in love with it. So she wants me to finish it so she can wear it. And you know, I've, I've come to a realization about my kids in knitting because I do try to knit them a lot like sweaters and socks and hats and they just really don't wear anything a lot. Even the little one, like I have to force her to wear something I've made. And so I think I'm done knitting for my kids for a while. I think unless I just like am dying to knit them something, I'm just not going to do it because I spend all this time, all this effort, all this work into producing something for them to like wear one time. And I'm like, I, I could have used that yarn for something else. But I did begin her little baby sweater 
if y'all remember, this woodland pullover pattern has a baby sweater. The pattern is paid, but the little baby sweater is free. So y'all could knit that anytime for any kiddos in your life. And I did start it and I forgot to switch my needle on the ribbing to be bigger. And that wasn't a big deal, but this isn't going to fit the baby that I originally intended. She carries this one. She probably has six or seven different dolls, but she has a particular affinity for one specific doll as children usually do. And this, there's no way this is going to fit her. So I think what I'm going to do, since I don't have to really worry about gauge much, since it's a baby doll sweater, yeah. is just upsize my needle ridiculously. Like I might knit this on a seven instead of a five and see if then it will, sorry about the cat, see if it will then um, fit that baby doll. So I hope so, but, and I do think she'll wear this, but again, you know, I, this is Madeline Tosh. It's three skeins of yarn. It's not a cheap knit. And for her to like wear it for three or four times one season, it's not very cost effective to knit for your kids. Especially when I like wear my things all of the time. By the way, I'm wearing my Tegna uh, pattern by Caitlin Hunter. This is knit in, I believe it was Lola Did It yarn in her cashmere one of her cashmere silk bases because it's really silky and cashmere and it's got this lovely lace detail on the bottom. I really enjoyed knitting this. I know a lot of people had problems with the neckline. I didn't. I don't remember having problems with the neckline. So I, I love the fit of this. The sleeves are a little tight, but it's just because my arms are so muscular and yeah, I really love this. I've worn this quite a few times. So that's that project. I've been all over the place on my projects, guys. So if I bounce around, I'm sorry. But y'all, y'all know that's me by this time. Um, so this, I showed you guys this brioche hat maybe the episode before last that I was knitting for Tim. This is the Harlow hat by Andrew and Mowry. And it's just a simple um, two-color brioche hat. And I had made a mistake. <laughs> Sorry, I made a mistake on his last, on the last installment of this hat. And so I ripped it completely out because I had like two white loops over my brown yarn on the inside and I wanted it to be completely reversible and not for me to be able to see a mistake. So I, sorry, I'm looking and I'm like, is that a mistake? No, it's not. It's fine. So I began again and I mean, I banged this out pretty quickly. I've never done decreases on brioche. So I'm to the decrease point yet. And I was like, I don't know what to do. So I had to put it in a timeout while I began something else yet again, but I'm in love with this hat. I did watch Andrea Mowry's decreasing videos that she pairs with this pattern. And I, I just need to sit down one morning, one quiet morning and get it banged out because it's, it's not too hard, but yeah, it's so squishy. It's so amazing. The yarn is Madeline Tosh and modern fair aisle and the interior is coffee grounds. It's kind of getting blown out because of my lighting, but there we go. Here's the, yeah, I just got a, a proper circle ring light for podcasting and it's totally blowing it out. See though, so you can see the orange flecks in there and he has this gorgeous red beard. And so that's really going to pop, but that is that project. And I had my Turkey on it because I was knitting this on Thanksgiving this is um, a turkey from Suko Sugra Miniatures. I love her progress keepers so much. And then I got a wild hair, of course, like you do, and cast on on Thanksgiving. And I was like, I wonder if I can knit a sweater in a week. My birthday's next week. I wonder if I can have a sweater done by that. Because I had some downtime and it was days of, you know, just spending time with family, not really doing much else. I, call me crazy, but I've had this yarn in my stash for ages. I originally bought it for Tim to knit him a sweater and I'd started him a sweater. This is his portion of the sweater. And I don't know what happened. I just never got very far on it. And then he decided he didn't really like the yarn until I was knitting it up for me. And then he was like, how, how did I say I didn't like that? I love that yarn. I want a sweater with that yarn. And I was, of course, already almost finished with this. This is the Weekender by Andrew Mowry. And 
I started this last Thursday. It is Thursday now, and I have a whole body of a sweater done. The um, shoulders are bound off and everything. It's not a very great representation because it's just a big rectangle, basically, but my sleeves will go here and like that. So I have knit this um, sweater pattern once before, and I used Shelter, which is what the pattern calls for, what she used, the designer used in the pattern. And I really don't like the Shelter yarn, I feel like, is too structured for this type of garment where it's, you know, there's not a lot of detail going on here. It's just basic shaping. And so that just, it doesn't sit right on me and it kind of bunches up weird when I'm wearing it. So I almost never wear that sweater, which is a bummer. And so I thought if I knit it in the merino yarn, then it will like relax and lay nicer. And so that's where I'm at with that. Now that I have this whole thing done, y'all know me, I don't want to knit sleeves. Who wants to knit sleeves when there's so many other sweaters to begin? So that is how far I am on that. And I'll probably get to the sleeves within the next week. Let's tell ourselves that. Sure, sure. But that's in my fringe supply bag. I had been out of the knitting world for like 18 months or so, and I had no idea fringe supply went out of business. That makes me so sad. But they did. They're no longer in business. Um, so you could probably find one of these on like Ravelry D stashes or something. I've bought um, one from a D stash as well. So that is that project. And then because Tim took me yarn shopping and I went crazy at the yarn store, I was like, you know, Tim really deserves a sweater. I really need to knit Tim a sweater so he can be covered in hand knit love. And so I chose, is there a better photo? After going through lots of different pattern options and different things, we'll get to why I'm doing this. So as I mentioned, I knit the Weekender in Shelter, and this is Shelter too. This is my little cabin's it might not be Little Cabins. It might just be Cabin by Ann, um, Caitlin Hunter. Sticky. Quit making pig noises. And I knit this probably, I started this two years ago, three years ago. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at my project page. But this is to the point where I was supposed to be doing something different. And so that's why I put it down. And I just decided, you know, as much as I do not wear that other shelter sweater that I made, I probably won't wear this one either because it's a pullover. Um, I do love the stitch definition of a shelter is amazing, but I just, I don't think it's, I don't think it makes a very good pullover garment. I think that it needs a more structured um, type of thing. So I'm ripping this out and because I'm ripping this out, I'm reusing this yarn for Tim's sweater. So I'm knitting the Jones, yeah, by Tin Can Knits. And it's just this really beautiful all over, that's a sh sh really crappy picture. Um, it's got cables all over it and moss stitch and so, and it buttons down. So he wanted, he was very specific about his sweater, which is exhausting, but I love him and we're gonna get this done. He wanted to pull uh, a cardigan, with buttons and so that's what we're gonna knit and I began it last night so I'm not very far along on it at all and oh my gosh he's a big guy y'all he is a big guy and so the last sweater that I was knitting him was knit in pieces not this one's bottom up so I had to cast on all of the stitches all of them and it was 300 and 31 stitches. It took me two tries and I'm in the middle of a row. So it's nothing to look at because I'm still like on the bottom ribbing, but I did start his sweater. Look how huge that is. I don't even have an, a cable needle big enough. All my stitches are scrunched. I thought about, so I have the chow goo set and I thought about doing the, they have like a join for your cables. And I might do that when I put my sixes on, just um, join the cables together. That way I actually have a long enough cable for the entire sweater. And it's not, because I don't like that. I don't know. It's just not satisfying to me to have it like all bunched up like that. 
But that's all I have to say about that. Knit and Shelter, just a boring, kind of creamy yarn. But I think that the um, cables are really, really going to pop with this, this yarn. So I'm excited to get to the cable panels on that. And then I also, we, we were, we moved, we shut down the lake house. So where I'd been for the past previous three years, it's, we now closed on it. We sold it and we had to move all of our stuff out. And on my way to go deal with the movers, I'm like thinking about my stash as one does. And I'm like, you know what? I have this yarn, this yarn, and this yarn that will be amazing in a Christmas soldanta. So if you don't know, Dotna, I don't know if I'm saying that right. So Dotna is that is the Crops Cardigan. A lot of people have knit this. It's all over Instagram. Um, this is by Caitlin Hunter. And I had started a previous version with scrap yarn too, just yarn out of my stash. And I didn't really like the colors that I picked for it. And so I ripped it out. But then I was thinking I could knit a Christmassy one and it would be amazing. I'm obsessed with Christmas this year. I haven't always loved Christmas. I've had issues with the holidays and I don't know, ever since I've had my Christmas baby, I just really get into the whole Christmas spirit. So this is all fingering weight yarn, except for the cream one, which is a DK like you're supposed to have. And this is, I want to say this is Malabrigo, but so I have these three fingering weight yarns. Cause these are the same. I know they don't look the same. They're the same though. Um, so I'm going to hold these together. I'm going to hold these two together for the main body and this will be incorporated into the like checkered place. And then this is going to be like the collar and the cuffs and the ribbing on the bottom, but I'll have to hold it all double except for the white. But yeah, won't that be fun? You guys, I'm dying to cast this on, but I also at least want to get the pink sweater and baby sweater finished, finished before I cast anything else on y'all cross y'all's fingers for me because y'all know that probably won't happen, but that is all of the things that I've been working on. So I'm going to pause it right here and grab my stash, stash acquisitions and show you guys what I got for my birthday. So one sec. Okay. So we went to McKinney Knittery, which is so far from me. On Saturday, McKinney Knittery. I actually got this last year when I went for my birthday. I love this store. It's so aesthetically pleasing when you walk in. It's a very old building in downtown McKinney. They have tons of yarn from tons of different indie dyers as well as more um, industry makers. Is that what they're called? I don't know. Anyway, this is my birthday haul. I told you guys. It was a little insane. It doesn't even fit all in one bag. But I had, so this time I did, I was so responsible. I like poured over my Ravelry and my library and was like, okay, what do I want to make this next year? What's lacking in my stash? What's lacking on my needles as far as like technique that I want to learn or such? So I was very mindful in going into shopping. I did want to knit the, there's a new pattern called the magical mohair, and I really wanted to knit that and get yarn for it, but they didn't have mohair that I was wanting to knit my sweater in, and so they had plenty of mohair. I just, I passed on it. And so instead of that sweater, I kind of scrapped that, and I had had this hedgehog fiber tweed on my radar since last year when they came out with it, and I really like the black one, um, but this just reminded me of birthday cake. So I was like, okay, I'll get the grayish one. And I really didn't know. This was the only kind of yarn that I went in there. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. But as soon as we left, I went on Ravelry like you do. And was searching the patterns. And Andrea Mowry, I know. Y'all probably going to get so sick of hearing her name. I knit a lot of her patterns. I like her patterns. I like her aesthetic. I like her style. But she has a Winter's Beach cardigan. And it's a cabled cardigan. And she actually used this exact yarn to knit it. And I was like, done, done. I'm going to knit that. And so I got, you only, I only need five skeins for that cardigan, but I have seven. And so I'll probably knit it. She's, 
she knits everything she makes cropped, which isn't my style. I'll probably knit it much longer than she did, which is great that I have these two extra skeins so I can knit it as long as I want. But yeah, so that was my plan for that yarn. I'm super excited about it. And then this was sort of a last minute, like they were already ringing me up at the till. And I was like, Tim, I really want to knit you a pullover. So let's put, pick yarn for a pullover. And I really wanted to work with this. I've been wanting to work with this for a while. It's wool folk in their far face which is a really interested, interesting construction. It's chain plied. It's 142 yards, 50 grams, and it is the softest yarn in the world. Really, I believe that. And they didn't have one color. They didn't have enough of one color for me to knit him a whole cardigan or a whole pullover. So I just grabbed a couple of different grays to knit him a pullover in. So I got this really dark, these are black and then a lighter, much like silver gray and then a medium gray. So I think that will be really nice. And I plan to like stripe it and knit him a uh, pullover with this. I'm really excited to get this yarn on my needles. It's so squishy and yummy. And I just think it's going to be a dream to knit with. So that was that. And then last year I knit a silver, a beautiful silver hat. It was the Everyday Beanie by Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns. And I love the yarn I used, love my pom-pom. That hat was destroyed by a friend's animal. And so I had to knit myself another gray silver hat. I had to knit myself another gray silver hat. And so I got this Magpie Swanky DK, which is 80% Merino cat. Stop it. 80% Merino, 10% nylon, and 10% cashmere. And then I paired it with her feather base. And they're both the colorway Ash, which I thought they were the mist, but Ash works too. And I'm going to knit the Kobu cat because I love that hat pattern and I, I've knit it before, but I'm not in love with the yarn choice that I made because my mohair was um, a different color as my main yarn and it looks marled and it just takes away from the pattern detail. So yeah, I'm going to knit that and I actually got a pom-pom for it too. But yeah, these are the big bad wool pom-poms. They're my favorite. I love them. They have the little snaps so you can take it off to wash it. I got this gray one. I got a purple one for the hat that I knit Prudence. I just haven't put it on there. And then I got a white one just to have in the stash because I want to knit something to go with that. Maybe a Christmas hat. But those were the pom-poms and the other hat yarn. Still not done, guys. It's ridiculous. And then, so... Michelle of Naughty Knitwits is knitting the bobble cardigan right now by Stephen West. And I just found the construction really interesting. The stitch work's really interesting. So I really want to knit one of those cardigans. And so I got this yarn to knit that. It's really getting blown out. But this is Madeline Tosh in the colorway Kitten. It's a very... I would say brownish gray. It definitely has some brown undertones. Yeah, it's kind of getting blown out, but very brownish gray. And then I got this Madeline Tosh is the colorway Antler, but it's their Tweety base, which I didn't notice until I got it home. And I was like, oh, how fun. But it's their single in a tweed. And then I got... This Madeline Tosh, it's the colorway as ever, and it's just this kind of peachy, creamy with these really cool speckles in it. It's getting blown out. Let me see. There we go. I really liked it. It's just really soft coloring. And then I got these two Labina May yarns. This one's very browns and creams, but it also has those speckles in it which is just so much fun. It's the colorway Fiora, Fiori, Fiora. I don't know. It's French. Don't ask me to pronounce things. And then this really pretty pink color, like clay almost, is Nadia. And so it's very pinky with darker pink speckles. 
Um, I just think that's going to be a really gorgeous bobble cardigan by Stephen West. And then, so I was asking Tim which sweater I should, I had three different sweaters picked out. It was the bobble cardigan, the winter fell, I think it's called winter fell. And then that magical mohair. And he was like, why don't you just buy sweaters for all three? I love him. That's why he's getting a sweater. Um, and so this was at the top of my list because I love that sweater. I think it's called the winter fell. I'm going to pull it up on my phone right quick, but it's by knit love wool. And she just had a sale. Oh, it's, did I say winter fell? It's the hinterland. So I was way off, but, and it's, it's got a glare. But see, it's got trees. I love it. And it's that color work yoke that I love with a little bit of sleeve detail. Um, and I got the pretty much the exact yarn she used in the pattern. I don't think she used necessarily this um, dyer, but it was a navy base with the spin cycle um, salty dog as the trees. So that's what I got. And this is Magpie. And it's her swanky sock, which is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and the colorway follow you into the dark. And it is so yummy. It's so squishy. I cannot wait to get this on my needles. It, it feels like a dream. And I think that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of the finished object. So that is another sweater that I got. And I just had to have this one, okay? <laughs> I saw it and I said, I have no plan for it. I really don't need to get singles and yarn that I have no plan for, but it said, you can't leave me behind. This is kind of, wow, that's really blown out. It's showing up more yellowy pink. It's definitely not this fluorescent hot pink. It's gorgeous. I have like a water bottle and also a fleece in the same color. So it's kind of like my signature color. I joked to Tim. And it's the Fluoro Morganite is the colorway. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. This is the only one that I'm like, I don't know. It's going to sit right here in the pink box stash and I'll pet it until I have a plan. I'm thinking about doing the brioche. There's a brioche shawl. What the fade maybe? Um, that I was thinking about holding this with some gray yarn as the background. And that would be a really cool shawl. And then I got this because they had it. But also Tracy from Grocery Girl Knits was just talking about this yarn. I don't know if it was this yarn or just yarn similar to this. I'm not sure if it was the same company or not. But this is Harrisville Designs. Right. Harrisville Designs. So it's Shetland Cones. They are 8 ounces approximately 900 yards, 100% virgin wool. And she was saying, if you haven't knit on cone yarn, you definitely have to give it a try because it just blooms lovely and like washing it's a treat because it's very heavily oiled yarn. And so when you wash it, all those oils come out and like the yarn lofts and blooms. So I got cypress and I think this is just like beige, white, cypress and white. But there are quite a few sweaters and hat patterns that have like trees as the background with a white. And so that's why I got this. Just figure something out to do with it. I just couldn't pass it up. And this is 900 yards. This is the deal that I was like, I can't leave this. It's $24 a cone for 900 yards of 100% virgin wool. I just think that's a steal for anyone. And then the ability to like basically knit an entire sweater with one, one, one string of yarn and not have to weave in endless ends would be nice. So that is all of the projects that I got. My bag is now empty. I know that's insane. Um, but I did also go to Knitsgiving a week ago, the day before Thanksgiving, I went to Knitsgiving with a group of my knitty friends. It was so much fun. We had a little exchange table so we could bring some of our yarn and exchange it. So I ended up getting a candle from that table. And this is Mesa Skeins, which is a 
relatively new. I think she's been dying about a year ish now. She's a podcaster too. So definitely check her out. Um, Macy's awesome, but she has this Macy's skeins is her company and she hand dyes yarn and then makes these little candles too. So this is strawberries, champagne and strawberries. It's very sweet smelling. So I got that off the stash table. I got these two skeins of patents. I love patents, Croy for socks. Um, it's so hard wearing and amazing. And I just love those colors. So I grabbed this and then one of the people was kind of late getting there. And so she didn't put her yarn out. I'd already picked up stuff. And as soon as she put her yarn out, I was like, oh, dang it. I want that yarn. And, but I didn't want to like go and put stuff back and take something else. But a friend, another friend of mine went up to the table and snatched up. She had two skeins of it. And so she snatched up both of them and she was like, I'm taking this. And I was like, hey, if you have any left over after your project, I'd, I'd love some scraps of that because it's just so gorgeous. And she gave me one of the balls, y'all. This is Wool and the Gang, which I've never worked with their yarn. I've heard good things about it, but this is Night Fever Navy, and it's 426 yards. And it is sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Like, look at that. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. I was thinking maybe a shawl. I have some other yarn that I could put with it and then make the um, Starflake Shawl. I think that's what it's called by Stephen West. I started it a while back, um, but never finished it. So, yeah, I just love that. But I think that's all I'll show you and talk about for today. So thanks so much for joining me. I know I kind of rushed through it all, but I was excited about sitting down and talking to y'all and showing y'all what I've been working on. So I'm going to sign off and get to work on the rest of Tim's ribbing and try not to cast on my soul dot on today. So have fun knitting. Tell me what you're working on down in the comments. Um, Oh, I have to show this too. I just, it just caught my eye. So this was one of my favorite birthday gifts. A friend got me this and it's this little mug. You can't see the lines there. It's this little mug with a lid that looks like a mushroom hat. Isn't that the cutest? I love this. And I've just had it sat over here and been admiring it. So, um, thanks so much for joining me to get today, guys. I'm all over the place. Can't even talk. I might re-record this. That's crazy. I won't do that. But yeah, I'll catch you again next week. I'll be back to regular weekly podcasts until the girls are home from Christmas break. And then we'll go to New Mexico for Christmas. So um, I hope y'all are having fun watching Vlogmases. I don't... Sometimes I catch like a few of my my absolute favorite podcasters that I follow. Like Kay from Crazy Sock Lady. Hey, Kay! But I, I'm not a really, I don't follow along with a lot of the blog, blog misses. I get the hype. I get that y'all love them, but it's just, a, and it gets overwhelming in my news and like my feed to have like all of these videos every single day. And I'm trying to get through all of them so I can go and click to the one, you know, the one podcast that's uploaded so I can actually sit in it for a while. But I love that other people love doing vlogmases. I just will never, you'll never see me do a vlogmas. Never say never, but I don't have the energy to record every day. Um, but yeah, that's all. I know I keep saying that, but I'm trying to think if I covered everything. This is why you should have show notes, Amber. Genius. But I did, I covered everything that I've been working on, which has been a lot, and everything I bought, which was a lot. So yeah, I hope you have a good week following and we'll see you next week. Bye.